and welcome to Starting Up. This week we come to you from the Crossword Bookstore here in Mumbai. Indeed, it's been a sad week for entrepreneurs across the world. On the 5th of October, we saw the demise of somebody many believe was the world's greatest entrepreneur. On the show this week, we've got some of India's finest entrepreneurs paying their tribute to icon and legend Steve Jobs. That and a lot more coming your way over the next half hour. On the show this week, it's the biggest blowout Indian startup success story of our time and exclusive in Naveen Tiwari of Inmobi. I don't think we planned it to be this big at all. Uh, we always hoped for it to be this big. On Trend Wheel, we analyze the big voice on the cloud opportunity and the various startups that are making an impact on the space. Now this one's a firm that's rumored to be valued in excess of $900 million. In fact, a firm that in the last four years completely turned its model around and even spread to 150 countries. When it comes to position, it's only number two to Google in the mobile advertising space. We're talking about none other than InMobi. And so these say I'll caught up then with the Indian startup ecosystem's latest pin-up boy, Naveen Tiwari, for this exclusive. Hello and welcome to this starting up special with uh, in many ways the pin-up company, the pin-up boy of the Indian startup ecosystem, Naveen Tiwari. Naveen, congratulations on the $200 million funding. Thank you. Naveen, take us through it. I mean, everyone's talking about it. Take us through uh, how the SoftBank deal really happened. We've been in, we, you know, we've obviously been in, in, in discussions with them and we felt when we met them that these guys really understood the space very well. Um, you know, when you meet the team and, you know, obviously we've spent a lot of time with the team, um, we really enjoyed their entrepreneurial uh, ambitions, their uh, aggressiveness, and their you know belief in the space that we are in. And when they looked at this and they said, "Look, this is a multi multi billion dollar space, and you guys are doing outstanding work in the space, and you have a you know kind of you're you're spread across multiple parts of the world." This is the place that we really want to play in. Sure. Uh, it just seemed like a great fit. So, rumor mill has it that you know Masayoshi Sen, uh, he doesn't necessarily ever take uh, less than 30% in the company. So is it fair to say that uh, Inmobi's current valuation is about uh, $600 million? Well, you know, we're not talking about valuations <laughs> at all here. Um, you know, valuations are one thing. I think the more important to us was that... Uh, but is, know, is that in the region, Navi? Again, I'm not going to comment <laughs> on that at all. Uh, the rumor mills are great. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they can continue to happen and we love that and we, you know, we're going to promote it. Going back in time, right? So Inmobi is a fantastic story. Today you're in 165 countries, over 50 billion ad impressions per month. You reach out to 350 million people, if you're not mistaken. Um, a lot of people in India at least still don't know what Inmobi does, right? Yeah. I'm sure you have, you come across this uh, time and again. And the reason why people don't know, uh, maybe don't know Inmobi that well is because we work at the back end. Sure. What we do is we basically help the mobile internet ecosystem exists. Now, the way it very simply works is that, you know, once you're using your phone, you use a lot of applications on it. There are applications, thousands of application developers out there in the world who basically create these applications. But how do these guys make money? They make money two ways. Either you as a user pay them some money or advertisers pay them some money. What we do is we kind of sit in the center of the advertising world and these developers and we basically put ads onto these applications in a very targeted manner, in a very scalable manner, which allows these guys to generate revenue. A lot of people don't know, Naveen, that uh, the company started off as mCoach, right? Yeah. And uh, mobile search on SMS. Take us yeah. back to that stage. Why did you look at mCoach and what opportunity do you really see? You know, the journey was very simple. The journey was, you know, coming out of business school, the idea was that, look, I think the world is going through this fantastic change and, you know, the, uh, I felt that we should try and do something uh, on my own and you know as it happens you bump into a few people that you really really enjoy and you say look These are the guys that I would love to be with and those are my co-founders today Yes, we started off as a mobile search company But we gave that up within six months because we were quite clear that that's not going to be one of the largest segments that we could be in sure. And we felt that there could be other things that we could work on that will be larger and So what we've heard is that uh, during that stage when you yeah. were actually setting up mCoach That's when the real bond came together between yeah. you Abe and Mohit, and we actually have uh, someone from that team who's going to actually oh. talk us through it. So, why don't you listen in, Navi? We all had moved from Bangalore to Bombay uh, in a in an apartment without any uh, mattresses and without any furnitures, and clearly we had these few borrowed uh, uh, mattresses that we were putting on the ground and sleeping through. And this, this period kind of lasted for about two or three months. All of our families were away from uh, us. 
and here was this bunch of three uh, quasi bachelor guys now into an apartment uh, with the dream in their eyes. That period is what I think set us together. The three quasi bachelors. Well, it was really getting off the ground. Huh? Steve Jobs was a garage for Naveen Tiwari. It was a mattress uh, in an unfurnished apartment. Yeah. M. Koj um, got off to a rocky start and there was one point of time when you'll realize that, hey, you know, M. Koj might not be it and it took you all, I think, about six to eight months to come to that decision, right? Yeah. So uh, we spoke to someone from your team who told us when that tipping point really was. Sure. We, we had actually sponsored uh, uh, the whole uh, monsoon hangama event which, uh, which happens at Inorbit and we had actually sponsored that event. We had paid a quite, a, quite a sum of money to be the lead sponsor. And after five, five days of active uh, involvement uh, and, and a lot of marketing and a lot of strategy and a lot of operation support behind it, uh, we kind of realized that the uptake of this within the, within the user community is not as much as what we anticipated it to be. So Naveen, you remember that event, Monsoon Hangama at Inorbit? That was the, you know, that was the cutting event. So we, we were having our doubts on the business model. Sure. But that event and the lack Or the non-event. The non-event, <laughs> exactly. It was a little rainy and it was a little monsoon <laughs> event. And that didn't really, you know, turn out the way we wanted it to be sure. or we expected it to be. Who mustered the courage to go up and tell the Mumbai Angels all of this? Well, it was my responsibility. Um, as, the, uh, as the CEO, it was my responsibility. So how did that meeting go? Actually, we have someone who's going to tell us exactly how that meeting went. Wow. So have a look right. at this. <laughs> I remember a meeting where um, Naveen came in and said, uh, we don't think it's quite happening. Uh, we said, what do you mean? Said, uh, no, this, does, this, this just seems too um, ambitious and too, too large. It's almost like boiling the ocean. We think we may have something that we, uh, we can instead launch. We were absolutely shocked and he said, uh, we, we want to do uh, mobile advertising. You know, I don't think, uh, you know, we were absolutely convinced at the board meeting. Uh, we said, okay, uh, you know, you sound very convinced about it, or at least giving this a shot. But the most important fact was that we had thought that, okay, if something was not working, then something else had to be tried. There was very little to lose. That was quite a defining moment, but I still remember walking out of that meeting thinking, all right, this, the, the first investment, angel investment that I made in India is probably a write-off. So Naveen, probably a write-off? And I'm glad Praveen is not right on this call. Naveen, the next tipping point in many ways was uh, when you saw some traction within Mobi and you uh, took off on a flight, right, to Silicon Valley to raise some funding, yeah. right? And yeah. uh, uh, a lot of people thought uh, that expense itself was something the company couldn't afford, yeah. right? And we yeah. actually have uh, an interesting anecdote from one of your co-founders, so why don't you listen right. to this? Cool. I remember the day Naveen went to, uh, to uh, Silicon Valley to raise some fund and we were hoping that you know basically we should be able to raise some money with some tier 2, tier 3 investment and when he called us and he said you know uh, we are being funded by Kleiner Perkins, pretty much I think that day uh, we all knew you know that this was the hardest part since that day we never thought anything less than of a multi-billion dollar company. So Naveen, what was that meeting really like with uh, Ram? I was basically looking at that as a meeting to say, look, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to just be in front of a legend. Um, and it was funny because I think it was 20 minutes into the meeting and he, and he said, look, I get it. Close the presentation. We're going to fund this. Tell me the execution plan. And, and there I am, as, uh, you know, three months into funding. Nobody has said this to me. <laughs> Shell-shocked. Shell-shocked for two things. One, he has said we're going to fund this. Second, he's asked me a question which I have no answer to, which is what's the execution plan? <laughs> I don't have an execution plan because I've been trying to figure out how to pay my bills. So Naveen, uh, what was the execution plan then? Because one big part of your execution plan was that, hey, we're not going to the US, yeah. we're going to other countries. Our thought process was that we could either go and do this business in US, which is a fairly, you know... Uh, competitive market. A competitive market and a very natural choice. The second one was that, look, if we are true believers in the space and we truly believe that mobile internet is going to be used by people, that means it will certainly be used by people who do not have PC, which means the emerging markets will be a huge growth, growth area. And therefore, our first hypothesis was, let's not go to US, let's go to emerging markets. And therefore, we targeted Southeast Asia, South Asia, and Africa as our key markets to focus on. 
Today you're the number two uh, largest mobile ad network and your plan is to become number one clearly, right? Yeah. And you're taking on the two biggest boys in the technology world, right? Yes. Uh, Google and Apple, yeah. right? And most people might think you're crazy yeah. <laughs> to actually be actually taking them on, right? right? So what were some of the views you got while uh, taking on Google and Apple because in many ways they own the ecosystem you're playing on? Well, that's correct to a certain extent, sure. but I think, you know, some of the things that, that are important to understand in this ecosystem, which are the nuances of it, is one, that this space is very large. Second part is, you know, some of the large companies that you mentioned, they have many things to do. Right. This is not their core area of focus. Sure. Sure. For us, this is our day in and day out. At least 70% of your ads show up on Android or Apple handset. They are your two biggest competitors as well. Sure. Uh, was it a fear when Apple launched iAd that they would stop all advertising from other players, from other third party players? Or how do you react to thoughts like that? Right. So look, I don't think the, the operating systems own this. I think each of these companies have a much larger vision sure. and goal. Um, and what they are looking to do is to, you know, kind of grow the ecosystem. Okay. That's when they all gain. Right, right. Which means that the e and this ecosystem is controlled by the developer. Right. And each of these companies are very clear that what they need to do has to be right for the developers. Sure. And for what's right for the developer is competitiveness in terms of the offerings that are coming to them, which such that each one is basically uh, it's open. It's open. Another view actually is the fact that hey, Inmobi's uh, initial growth was powered by these uh, smaller countries like Indonesia, South Africa, Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific. Correct. But the pace of growth from these countries is never going to be the same as it was four years ago. Right? Yes. So uh, given that, um, what's new? What's brewing new at, at Inmobi? Because clearly the ad network play is not going to give you the same growth as it did say three years ago. So would you, would you say that's right? I, I wouldn't agree on that. Okay. And the reason I wouldn't agree is because okay. yes, the, the smaller countries gave us the growth three years ago. Today the growth is also coming from, up, these con country, countries continue to grow okay. rapidly. But how come? Because, because you know, more and more users are taking They're you're saying, mobile Absolutely, wise. absolutely, okay. right? Okay. So, so the pace of growth has remained the same? It's faster. The reason why that's growing faster is because we also are now in more developed markets. Sure. But the point that you are making is uh, also from a long-term perspective, right. the way we kind of think about this is, yes, we are very strong at the at the ad network play, at the advertising play, yeah. and we will be strong at that, and right. we'll be one of the world leaders on that. Our play is going to be more of an ecosystem play at the mobile internet level, right. which means that we are going to go. You know, we we, we have as we did advertising, where you know we launched a product a few months ago called Smart Pay. Right. Uh, it's a payments product. Right. Uh, it allows for users to make payments. Um, for buying stuff on internet, on mobile internet. I mean, another question when a company starts scaling, yeah. or just before you hit the private equity stage which you've just reached is, is it built to scale or is it built to sale, right? And uh, what's your answer to that? Well, I think, you know, I think we're enjoying what we're doing. Sure. We're loving it. Right. Um, I think we can scale this um, to, the, to the next level. What if you get the right price? We're gonna still look to build to scale. So looking back, Naveen, um, how would you describe the journey, the InMobi journey? Has it gone to plan? Or has it not gone to plan? Or has it been a roller coaster? How do you look back on the I last don't think years? it has gone to plan at all. I don't think we planned it to be this big at all. Uh, we always hoped for it to be this big. We never planned it to be so big. Uh, and I think, you know, what we have done rightly to us at certain points of time is to make decisions uh, and make very quick decisions. Is to say, look, we're going to make, we're not going to do this, we're going to do this. Here's the risk that, that's associated to it. We'll take the risk and we'll go on with that. And I think some of those risks have paid, paid off and, you know, we were lucky. Um, and uh, the market, frankly, uh, has supported us. You know, I would say, yes, you know, we love where we are. Um, did we plan for it? No. But did we, uh, did we believe in it? Yes. So, Naveen, this is the starting up show, right? And we have a bunch of entrepreneurs watching. A lot of them want to emulate you and you become a role model for them. Give us uh, one piece of advice from the Naveen Tiwari Experience Bank to all the young, budding entrepreneurs, product entrepreneurs watching the show. Things I would say, one, uh, please continue to think big. You know, take the risks. Right. Second, thinking big is critical because you know you don't want to be working, you're know, spending two years of your life to create something which is small. And thirdly, life's short. Right. Please do what you like. It's been a pleasure having the show. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Thank you so much. With the funding, over 50 of the employees at Inmobi are Karodpatis. It might be on paper for now, but hey, just a matter of time before they will be able to cash in on the equity. And then you have to agree, it's worth the risk when working with the startup does pay off. Truly an inspiration for all entrepreneurs. Let's take a breather here then on the show, but coming up.
The big voice on the cloud opportunity, we analyze the trend and explore the different plays.